Hi guys. So I had a couple of problems that I gave you for uh, about parts. Let's look at that. I had an extra problem, and it's kind of a little bit of a, a quite of work. So I want to do first the, the the regular ones that I assigned. Uh, let me get here the regular. That's um, twenty six. So in twenty six, um, they talk about the graph in Figure one. And so let me quickly draw that. It's a very small, it's a very simple graph. So it has five vertices. They're called A, B, C, D, and E. And we have, uh, these are the And so we, they ask, calculate the parts of a certain length. But I want to do this. Uh, they don't say simple parts, by the way. They just say parts. So we have a theorem that can help us. And so this, there are other ways to do that. But I wanted to show you how you can use the theorem here to do this. And so um, what we want to make is our uh, adjacency matrix of this graph. So, okay, we have A, B, C, D, and E. That's the labels for our columns and the same labels for our rows. Okay, so, and then uh, we have from A, we can go to D and to E. And the rest is zeros. Yeah, so if we, let's put the degrees here also. 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 2. So that we have... A, Check a little bit that we don't make mistakes. Then from B, there is one to D, to E, and to C. So zero, zero here. From C, I can go to B and to E. So zero, zero, zero. From D, I can go to A and to B. Zero. And finally, from E, <coughs> I can go to A, B, and C. So now... Sanity, sanity check, as I, I call this, right? Is this symmetric here around this axis? Uh, it looks like it, right? It's a bit harder to see because I didn't... It's not very uh, square, and that's a bit harder to see. So let me write it up as a real matrix. So as a matrix, A is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, and now I think it's clear that this is a symmetric matrix, so I'm correct, and also the degrees are correct, so I think I copied it right. So th what we need to do is, so they, they're asking us to calculate the number of parts um, of length 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, between C and D. So we have, uh, here is uh, C and here is D. Now, we, as I said, we can start drawing, but you remember if we're talking about parts, so a lot of silly parts can happen. You can go from C to E and go back and then go this way, or you can go twice back and then go back one more time and then go around one more time. And So to get a hold of all of them might be not so easy, especially when they are of bigger and bigger length. Uh, for instance, you can answer very easily the question of how many of length 2 are there. Well, none. Bec oh, no, no, right, no, sorry, sorry, there's one. There's one here, right? Uh, there's exactly one part from, from here to there. There's, there. And there's no other way to do this, okay? So all this information should come from looking at a square, a cube, a to the fourth, a to the fifth, a to the sixth, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8 to the 7. They want each of these entry, entries of these powers will tell me, that the entry that corresponds to C, D, will tell me whether there's a part from between C and D of that given length and how many there are. Okay, so let's, the way to do this is you can calculate these powers separately, but that's a kind of insane a uh, lot of work, although uh, if you have done linear algebra, there are techniques that allow you to write powers, but then you have to orthogonalize your, mat uh, diagonalize your matrix, which is even 
more uh, gruesome work. So we am just going to use Wolfram Alpha. And unfortunately, again, I need to write down, sorry, I need to jot it down for myself. Because <coughs> I want to do all this on the same. <coughs> so we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. So let's go to Wolfram Alpha. I still have the previous one. So that makes it a little bit... I have to adjust this a little bit here. So the first one was... Uh, that should have been a 0. And this is 1. Please keep an eye on me. And But there's not much you can do if I make a mistake, right? I know. And then here we have... Uh, this should be a 0, 1, and then the, yep, and the next one is also correct, and the last one, an extra 1 here. Okay. And now we start with the square of this matrix. So the square of this matrix is a, um, this guy. Okay, so we, we're going to import it again. Notability and add it to our thing. Import done. Uh, I'm going to do all of them. I oh, know because yeah. No, let, let's look at one at a time. Okay, let's look at this guy. Where is he? Okay, come back up here and a bit bigger. So uh, we, because what we need to label is where is C and where is D, right? So uh, that's the which entry are we talking about? So C is here. This is C. And D is here. So we are talking about that's, that's this entry here. Okay, so from now on, we, we visually know where the entry is. From In the next questions, I'm not going to go back here, but just I wanted to show you. It, it, it asks the path from C to D. Now, notice that this is again symmetric, so it's actually the same as this number from D to C. But, okay, let's focus on that one. It says 1. There's exactly one path, and that's what we noticed, right? There's only one path of, of that length that we can go. You cannot go the other way, because that's a path from D to C. So there's exactly one path from C to D. Okay? So that's what this number tells us. And now the rest, the other numbers will tell us. Uh, so now instead of the square, we're going to do the cube. Okay? So the number that we're dealing with, I hope you see the location. I cannot point. Uh, again, it's, it's the third row, fourth column, which is a 2. So there are two parts. Okay? So I, I'm going to say this in words because I, I don't want to keep switching from one to the other. Um, so remember there are two parts. We, we, we might start looking. We might just be interested and see which parts are there. Uh, parts of length 4. You see the number gets bigger. There are six now. Okay? And probably some of them are already like no no more simple parts. Right? Remember, this number is parts without the condition of simple. Without in other words, you're allowed to go over the same edge twice or even three times or, or many times you want. Parts of length five. The number that we're looking at is now be, be careful, there's a two in front, so it is two times seven, fourteen. Okay. It's clear that these numbers are getting so big that it, it's kind of unlikely that we will be able to find all of them without being very, very systematic. In the next number, parts of length 6 are 2 times 18, 36. And then finally, 7. Um, 88. Okay, so quite a lot of parts that go from uh, C to D uh, of, of the bigger the length is. So we said there were two parts, so we hit here, oh, sorry, let me go back here. We had one part of length two, here we had the two parts, and what would they be? Well, let's try to see where we can find them. I'll do them, I'll make them in uh, green. Uh, this is a part of length three, and there's another part of length three, which uh, is this one. And so the advantage is that I know there are only two, and I have found two. So I, I don't have to think about, is there any other combination that will give me a path? Okay, so that's the advantage of that theorem. Okay, that's 26. Uh, then the next one was 50, uh, 58. 
okay number 58 oops number 58 and that dealt with uh, the graph in exercise 2 let me draw the graph it's again not such a uh, it's it's basically the same uh, vertices but it is a and it is a directed graph i know that in the in the text itself in in the lecture itself i did not discuss um, directed graphs so much but let's do it let's nonetheless uh, use the I want to show you that actually everything I've said of undirected graphs is even true for directed graphs. Uh, this is still a simple directed graph in the sense there is no loops, but um, no multiple edges, but okay. But even that, so even that theorem about these matrices <coughs> even allows you to have um, multiple edges <coughs> and, and loops. But just remember, a loop would count twice when you have to put it into the adjacency matrix. Okay, so again, we need to make the adjacency matrix. Let's call it B this time. The only thing is this will no longer be guaranteed to be symmetric. It could, but it is not guaranteed anymore because it is a directed graph. And so <clears throat> we have to now be... Okay. But, but the way that we do it is exactly the same. From A. From A, I can go to D... And from A, I can go to B, and that's it. Okay. <clears throat> from B, I can go to A, I can go to E, and that's it. I cannot go to C, because the arrow goes the other way. Okay. From C, I can go to B, and I that's it. So, you see, typically such a matrix will have less ones in it, uh, although, of course, there are now more arrows, so, well, the number of ones, of course, is equal to the number of uh, arrows, so I should not say it that way, but, okay, uh, D, from D, I can go to A, and, uh, oh, that's it, all right, so that's not much, and from E, from E, I can go to C, and to D, and that's it, okay. So we could what what counts can we make? Remember, uh, what what if I cal calculate? I know this is, I'm lecturing now a little bit. If I would calculate the sum of these things, what would I be calculating? And I would calculate the out degree, right? From this is from a to something. So this number would be the out degree. What would this number be? The in degree. For instance, it's much clearer if I do it for e. The out degree for e is two because there are two arrows going out. The in degree of E is 1. There's only one arrow coming in. Okay, so uh, in an in uh, undirected graph, the sum of these er the, of the ones is exactly the degree, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3. Okay, but it is, doesn't matter whether you calculate it this way or that way because it's a, because of symmetry. Here we have different um, in and out degrees. Okay. But that's not what the question is. Uh, so what is our matrix? So our matrix is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, let's look at the question, because the question is uh, something else. It's not... Uh, it says... Find the length of the shortest part from A to C. How are we going to do that? The shortest part from A to C. Well, what are we going to... So this is B, right? First of all, is there a part... Is there an edge from A to C? No. What is... What, how we know this? Well, if we would not see the graph but only have the matrix, we would still know it because... Uh, this from... Sorry, let me write it down because I'm going to forget it. From A... To C. That's what I'm trying to go, right? Double checking. Yes. So from A to C. So we're looking, therefore, the position that we're looking for, and that's, that's, let me mark it again because we're always going to look at this position, is this here. That's the position that calculates the number, that, whether there's an edge or not. But what does it do in B square? It will tell me whether there's a part of length 2 from A to C. And part here now means really uh, a part. So 
this is not a part. From here to there is not a part because this will have uh, we, we have to follow the arrows now in, in, in a directed graph. Okay? So B square will tell us whether it is a part of that or of, of length two. If that if, if that is zero, then we look at B cube and see whether there is a non-zero. So we're looking for the first time we get a non-zero, if if at all, right? We don't we're not sure. The first time that a non-zero appears in each of these matrix on this spot, because that will be the smallest path. Be, because all the all previous ones are zero, so there are no paths on smaller length. And once there is a non-zero, it could be that all of a sudden it's zero, 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 and then in here it's only fifteen. That all of a sudden there are fifteen parts of that length. Why not? Graphs can be very complicated, and anything can happen. So let's go to um, our, our wall from alpha. So we have to. Oh, oh okay. Uh, not memorizing this thing, so I have to write it down again. I'm sorry, I didn't prepare myself well, right? But that's okay. Um, so, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, 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 one. And yeah, if I make a copy error or an, then of course my answer is going to be off. But okay, you then correct it yourself. It's the principle, right? I hope that this is the thing why I'm doing this exercise is that you understand how you use the theorem. Okay, so uh, I have to put put this in. I'm using my keyboard a little bit for this. So um, uh, this has to be a 1, 0, and this has to be a 0. Okay. Uh, this has to be a 1, uh, 0, uh, 0, and a 1. Then this is 1 is correct, but this should be a 0. And then I think everything is as it should. Then I should have a 1 and zeros here. And then the last one is, well, that has to be a 0. This has to be a 0. That a 1 and that a 1. I think I got it. Now, we have to start with the square. Is there a part of length 2? We saw there is not. So we should get on the position. Remember, the position that we're looking at is the first row, the third element in the first row, which is 0. Okay? So we knew that, because from the picture we saw that there is no um, <coughs> uh, no no way of going in, in two steps to from A to C. What what about the third power? So we're looking at the middle element in the first row. Ah, there is one. So this means already there's a part of length three here, and so now we can look for that part and. and, and I'm sure you, you see it, or everybody sees it, or quite a quickly. Uh, we go from A to B to C. You see that? <clears throat> but for instance, notice there is at the mo at, according to this information, there is no part from, let's say, from uh, no part that connect or no circuit actually from D to D. That that would be the the one but last row and the one but last column. That's a zero in there. Let's see, was there a zero in there too? What happened in part power two? The, the square? Oh, what happened, yo? Now you don't understand me. You've been doing everything so fine, and now you say you don't understand. What is that about to be? Did I touch something? No? Here is back. Notice that now we have a 1 there. Now, this should not surprise us because there is, for every vertex in a connected graph, that, oh no, that's not really true what I'm saying. This is, sorry, let's, let's see. So there's a part of length 2 from D to D. And this is clear because of what we see here, right? You can go this way. Let me do it in a different color. Oh, what am I doing? Different color, uh, different color. Or different color. So this way and this way. There's a part of length two. Okay. And so on. So we can play with this. I'm 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 gonna stop with playing this because um I wanna go to this last problem that is perhaps uh, the hardest of all the problems was to find to dis decide whether these two graphs were isomorphic or not. That was an extra problem. Um that is uh number twenty-two. And so we had um, two 
yeah, I have something coming up in 15 minutes. That's why I'm going to have to go a little bit fast. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then it's, uh, it's um, we have all these. It's an octagon. And uh, we have these crossings, the few crossings here, there's a crossing this way, and then there's a crossing here. And then there's a last, last crossing that way. And here the crossings are much more symmetric. Now, that doesn't mean that they are not isomorphic, just because there's a more symmetry in the second picture. So this is what we call G, and this is H. I'm going to call them A, B, C, D. E, F, G, H, and, okay, I'm running a bit of letters, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, and R. Luckily, our alphabet is long enough. Okay, so, um, what we would do is look for the paths of certain lengths. So, path of length, remember, there's no path of length 2. Uh, sorry, path, I'm I meant circuits, right? Circuits of length 2. This is, these are simple graphs, so circuit... And we're looking for simple circuits okay, of length like, okay, length 3. How many do we have? So length 3, let me put it this way. So, and then, so how many are there here? Um, sorry. Well, I see two, right? There's this triangle and there is this triangle. So there are Two, namely A, B, C, A, and H, F, G, H. Now, I don't know where to start, right? So, I'm just writing the triangles here. And here we have the triangles are K, L, M, K, and uh, P, Q, O, P. These are the, these two triangles here. Also, they are both, yeah, okay. Um, now, I should... So this is the first thing I've done, right? The, the two here and two there. But let's let mark the degrees. Unfortunately, there is nothing that tells these guys apart because they all have degree three. So that makes it quite... Uh, these are graphs that with this kind of what they call uniform degrees are very hard to tell apart because there is no way of... of so I, I cannot, if I look at the neighbors of a graph, well, they all have degree 3. Everything has a degree 3. So reasoning by degrees is not going to work. So also these, these two paths are both um, paths of vertices of degree 3. In other words, to put it simply, degrees have no bearing in this problem here. They will not help me here because they are all the same. Okay, but um, now we can look for paths of degree 4. Uh, I think there is, let me see here, one, two, three, four, five. No, that's five. Ah, here, one, two, three, four. I knew there was one. And here, one, two, three, four. So there's one here of degree four, and there's another one here of, of length four. So I think those are the only two, so two here and two there. Uh, so I'm going to write only one of them, uh, B, C, D, B, C, D, E, B. Well, let's write both of them. And the other one was uh, D, E, F, G, D. Okay, uh, here we had, where were the ones? Ah, there was the, the these two guys, right? The, the, like next to each other. So that is um, K, M, N R K and R N O Q R. Notice. So now what we what we want to look for is patterns. Patterns. Um, we cannot look at degrees, but what we see is we have these two parts of, of, of length four circuits of length four, and they have two vertices in common. Is this the same here too? Yes, E and D. So this kind of similarity tells me a lot. It tells me if there is an isomorphism, since these E and D are the only two vertices that lie on the both parts of, of, of degree of both circuits of length four, 
And the same is true here for um, N and R. So let me perhaps list those. Uh, I'll mark them with red. So N and R, N and R, N and R. And here we have, uh, what is it? D and E, right? D and E. Okay, and so this is D and E and D and E. That means that any isomorphism must map D or any correspondence. D must correspond to either R or N and E to the other one. So that, that already tells us uh, something about the restrictions that we have. There is also something going... It, it's sometimes not obvious at all. So these are things I didn't discuss in the previous thing. That's why I called it an extra problem, an optional problem, because it is not so easy. Um, with the triangles here, so we have the two triangles. Notice another thing in these triangles. If you look at how these, these, the vertices of these triangles are connected, look at this particular part here. I do it in a different color. This is the only part of length 1 between a vertex that's on one of the triangles and a vertex that's on the other triangle. So this we're talking about A and H here. Okay? Is, do we have something in the, a similar in that on the other side? Yes. L and P are both lying on, um, on, on a triangle and they are connected by a single edge. And this is the only ones, right? All the others um, uh, to go from K, from K to any of these other points on the triangle, or including this point, the distance is at least two. So that you have to go at least step two. So this is information that tells me something already. So this tells me that I should... If I have an isomorphism, so I, why, why, okay, uh, sorry, as I said, I, I, I'm kind of rushing it a bit because I want to finish this. Um, you could try to count how many parts of length 5, length 6, and so on, and I, the, the answer is always going to come out the same. So we are getting already thinking about perhaps there is an isomorphism here. And are, if there is an isomorphism or a correspondence, if you like that word better, then it tells me something. A should correspond to either L or P. Now, is it? notice that H is very symmetric. And therefore, if I would check L or P, it doesn't matter because I flip it over and get the other one. So if there is an isomorphism, it should not make matter whether I send A to L or A to P. So I'm going to send A to L. So this is my a guess, right? But a guess based on this information, <coughs> namely... A and H on the left and L and P on the right are the two only vertices that are connected to each other but lie on different triangles. Of course, of course, uh, these two lie on a triangle and are connected to each other by an edge, but that's because they lie on the same triangle. It's about... Okay, so... But once I make this guess, it tells me that H should correspond to P. So that is no choice anymore. And now the same here, uh, <coughs> reasoning I can apply to D and E. I think, again, things are is, uh, symmetric, so I don't think it matters. So if I send D to, let's say, R, so this is a guess, this time based on the fact, I repeat, the two vertices that are uh, colored in both sides red <coughs> are those that are lying on two parts of length 4, or circuits of length 4. On, there are only two parts of length 4, and these are the two that lie on both of these parts. So D goes to R, and therefore E goes to N. <clears throat> okay. So this leaves me with B, C, G, and F. And so now is the question, are there other similarities? But is there a reason for me... Uh, are B and C similar or not? <clears throat> well, there's another thing. Notice now, now we can start thinking about a path, right? So remember, one way of dealing with this is trying to create a path that goes through on the left-hand side and then say that same path must be on, there on the right-hand side. So let's start with this part that I already started from A to H. What is special about this part, path is it is the path that connects the two yellow vertices. They are very specific. There are only two yellow vertices. These are, repeat, the two vertices that lie on different triangles but have an edge between them. So corresponding to that must be this part. Okay. <clears throat> now, how far 
so the other part, part of the part is going to be the connection between these two guys. I could try, try at some point. Now, of course, I agree, this is not a part yet, so I, I have to decide now. So, how can I go from these special points, the yellow special points to the red special points? There is a part of length 2. There's a part of another part of length 2. Is that the same here? Part of length 2. There's a part of length 2. Yeah, there's another part of length 2. There's a part of length 2. So, okay, there's a part of length 3, and there's a part of length 3. So, it's, it seems that there are all these parts kind of don't make so much difference. Actually, there's another part of length 2 that I see here, and probably there are other parts of length 2 here too. Now, let's play a little bit with this. We have this part 1, 2, 3. Yes, 1, 2. So, I, at the moment, I don't see really any difference anymore between, well, except that B and G, no, B, B, G, F, and C are all neighbors of these two special points. And so, this is the same here, the yellow points, yeah, sorry, uh, let me get rid of this yellow line, perhaps it gets a little bit confusing. So, uh, we haven't part, my, part of a path right there. My point is... Um, as, oh, that I, I did this in the other video too, and then I got completely confused because I lost one of my edges, right? So, uh, and I seem like, yeah, of course I lost this edge too, okay. So, it seems that there is no distinction between B, C, G, and F anymore. So, probably I can send B to whatever I want. Well, let's think about this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm going, yeah, no, no, that's, no. So, okay, so I'm thinking, right, well, I, I went from A to H, so I, I might now say from H, I just go to G. What is that? G is a neighbor of a yellow point. So I have to pick a neighbor of a yellow point here. I was going from uh, A, from L to P, so I'm going now from P to O, say, okay? So under this correspondence, I'm saying that G these are my new guesses, right? So I'm guessing that G should correspond to O. If, I, if these two parts are the same, I don't know yet. Now, how do I... The next thing I want to do is, you see it better here, is connect to a, an or, to a red point. There's one way of connecting here. There's only one way of connecting. There's only one way here to connect. So, let's, so this forces me, these two, to be the same. So, at this point, when I made this choice, this is what I should do. Now, I already have decided what happens with these points, so I, it doesn't give me new information. I just constructed my path. Now, let's go do now the path that we were originally set. Let's go from our one red point to the other red point. So, we do the same here, or the same there. And now, we again, we have to make a choice. What should we do? Well, as far as B, C, and F are concerned, that doesn't seem to be... Anything, let's see. Um, okay, what is F? F is on a path from two points that are already on the path. Is that the same true for uh, B? Yes. So I'm talking about this path, right? But F then connects a, a red with a uh, yellow, but the same is true here. The same is not true for C. Uh, right, we have three left, right? Yes, yeah. So B, C, and F, there must be a distinction between them. Uh, see, there is no path from this to C in one step. So what C is special in regard my path. What is the point that is special regard this path? My path started, sorry, I have to think, yeah, my path went this way. So I should have written the arrows here a bit because I want to follow the path in the right direction. Which does not give me go return back to um, the yellow yellow ones. This is the distance three, distance two, but this is distance three. Okay, I have to go three steps. So M is special and C is special, and this tells me that. So I'm going to mark this this way. Uh, M and C must be connected because, as the path so far drawn, these are the only ones that um, are farther away from the yellow points, okay? Okay, so uh, I was in E, so C goes to M, so C goes to M, corresponds to M, so this is no longer a guess, I 
I noticed that this was special. And then again, what we have is, well, what can we do now? Well, um, where are we? Uh, our path ended, sorry, I didn't have draw. So the path was going, I'm going to draw the, a, a little bit of arrows here so that I can follow where I was. My path was going that way, right? This way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, so what should I choose now? Well, if I want to do, I, I, I don't have to make a circuit, right? So I'm, I'm just, well, it would be nice to make a circuit, but what I notice is there's a difference now between F and B because F is not the name of the green point, B is, okay? What is the situation, uh, and it's one point that I've not decided yet. What's the situation on the right-hand side? The neighbor of M that is undecided is K. Q is, also, is the other undecided point, but it is not a neighbor. So this tells me, because of neighborhoods, neighbors, that K being the neighbor of a green point and B being the neighbor of the green point must go to each other. So this is uh, B corresponds to K. B corresponds to K. And then completely determines with F. F therefore corresponds to Q. So here is my isomorphism that I propose based on the information that I draw from this graph. Now, as we all know, this is not a proof. But I'm running out of time, so I'm leaving it up to you to write down the, the adjacency matrices. And uh, remember, you make the adjacency matrix of this guy. You then... In, you list it in whatever order you want, but then whatever order you use here, you use the corresponding order there. And then calculate adjacent matrix and compare. Okay, I might make a secondary uh, solution movie over this uh, later on.